Grace to and peace from God our Creator and Christ our Redeemer. Please be seated. The last time that they had been gathered together like this, wrestling with boats and the frustration of empty nets, had been before they met Jesus. The man who stood on the beach and called to them was a stranger. They did not yet know whom Jesus was. So many things had not yet been revealed to these people who had become disciples. They could not imagine what lay before them. There was no way they could have known the wonders that they would witness as Jesus taught and worked in the countryside and the towns. Neither would they have suspected the love and devotion that they would come to feel for Jesus. A stranger stood on the shore and called to them. And for reasons that they could not explain, they felt compelled and able to respond to his words, follow me. I suspect that it's the same for most of us, whether we were raised within the Christian tradition or have come to it later in life. Our first encounter with Jesus is an encounter with a stranger. We maybe have heard others speak of him. We maybe have picked up a few of the stories that still circulate through our society, or maybe we even started reading about this Jesus person on our own out of curiosity, but our first encounter with Christ is always an encounter with a stranger, one whom we do not yet know, who calls to us. We cannot know where this call will lead us or the wonders we will see on the journey, yet something within us stirs and feels compelled to respond to his call. Follow me. Follow me. They're the words upon which this story turns, or the hinge upon which our lives pivot. The disciples certainly experienced this. Before these words were first uttered, they had known so little. Now, after the stranger on the shore had called them, they had come to discover so much. A new door was opened to them, and they knew more than they had before. The disciples had walked on the way with Jesus. They marveled at the signs that he worked and did their best to follow and understand the teachings he taught. It took them a while, but they finally discovered that the way upon which Jesus was leading them was the way of the cross, and they had watched in disbelief and horror and deep sadness as the one whom they loved and had followed for so long was crucified and lay dead upon the cross. Now, now the disciples were afraid. They were afraid because they didn't know how to follow the path any longer without Jesus to lead them. They were afraid because they understood that their lives were at risk, that the stakes were high. They were afraid because Though through their witness of his death and now his re- evident resurrection, they were finally beginning to realize who Jesus was, or perhaps more accurately, who Jesus is. Most of all, they were afraid because they understood for the first time the true cost of their discipleship. After all this had happened, They were once again gathered together on the edge of the sea, wrestling with their boat, feeling frustrated with the emptiness of their nets. We might well imagine that they were thinking to themselves, maybe even questioning out loud to each other, can't we be disciples and continue on as we were before? It's not just the disciples back then who felt this way, it's us now who feel this way. There comes a time in each of our faith journeys, and if we're being honest, there are in fact many such times in our lives when we start to understand where it is that the way of Jesus leads, when we start to realize who Jesus is, and when the consequences of our faith start to dawn on us. At those times, we may ask ourselves, just like the disciples seem to be asking themselves, as they attempt to return to their old lives in today's story, whether we might be able to be disciples while continuing as we were before. As if in response to this unspoken question, the risen Christ appears again to the disciples, just as he had before. At first, all they see is a stranger standing on the shore, but when he calls to them, they know 
than it is Jesus. And when the disciples come to him, they find that he's prepared a meal, and they eat together like they had so many times before. Jesus then questions Peter three times, do you love me? And when Peter insists that he does, Jesus responds with a commission to feed and tend his flock. Jesus' answer seems clear. We are disciples by more than name and by more than even belief. We are also disciples by our actions. The Gospel of John is written with the anticipation of the ascension always close at hand, the anticipation of the time when Jesus will not walk in our midst. It's not surprising. This Gospel is one of the last to be written as late as 60 or 70 some years after the crucifixion. The early Christian community was just starting to come to terms with the fact that the second coming wasn't going to come as soon as they had thought, and they were just starting to come to terms with how to be the church, how to be faithful disciples when Jesus wasn't physically with them any longer. So, this early group of Christians remembered. They remembered how Jesus came and spoke with the first disciples, terrified after the events of the crucifixion, just as they were now terrified by the persecutions that they experienced in those first few centuries of the church, just as we are terrified by the consequences of our own faith. They remembered that Jesus called the disciples, that Jesus calls all disciples in all ages to do his work in the world. They remembered that Jesus comes to us again after we start to understand who he is and what it is that he asks and calls us once again, saying, follow me. Jesus says, follow me and feed my lambs. Follow me and tend my sheep. Follow me and feed my sheep. And Jesus says, look, I have given you the fish you need to feed my flock. I have given you the courage you need to be my disciples. Follow me. This this is the good news, my friends. The way of discipleship does ask a lot of us, and it can be scary. And there will be times when we seriously question whether it could be better to just turn back, to try and go back to our lives before Jesus first called our names. But we do not face this journey alone, for Christ is with us. And Jesus always equips us with what we need to do the work that we are called to do. The work before us is real. The need of the world is profound, and the hunger for the good news of God is great. And thanks be to God, we're going to do our best, trusting that Jesus will equip us with what we need to do the work we are given to do. Because after all, before Jesus sent the disciples out to feed and care for his people, he showed them where to find the fish. And he is doing the same for us. Amen.